News for you, awesome websites without code. Hey, what's up, musers? John with Muse for You here to help you build awesome websites without code. And happy Halloween! Today is October thirty first. Um, I myself probably won't go trick or treating. That's not really something I do, but I did decide to create a Halloween website in Adobe Muse uh, using a few widgets from museforyoushop.com. So here we have this character here. She's a witch on a broom, and I have her floating with the Muse Motion widget. The bats here in the background are with the particles.js widget, the full screen version. And if I click refresh, we have the happy Halloween text. It's fading in with the animated text widget. So this character here and these illustrations down here, um, I got from adobestock.com and the bats in the background as well are from Adobe Stock. Uh, this font right here, I downloaded from defont.com and I'll leave a link in the, in the description area below. So I'll go ahead and open up the assets we'll be using. So the first thing I'll start off with is the assets that I used for the website. Um, I downloaded these Illustrator files from adobestock.com. So this character here was from this Illustrator file uh, from Adobe Stock. And I used a few of these graphics as well from uh, this Illustrator file here. Uh, so you can save it as SVG or .png. Uh, so what I did for a few of these graphics is I copied and pasted. So I'll copy this graphic here, go to File, New, and click Create and Paste. And then I want to object, artboard, and fit to artwork bounds. So with some of these images, you can save them as SVG or PNG. Um, SVG, what I found with some of these illustrations is that it created kind of this weird outline to the image. So I saved it as PN, uh, PNG. Uh, for the character here, um, I used her as, a, as an SVG and it looked good. So just kind of you know your preference if you want to use SVG or PNG. With SVG images, you don't really lose quality, even if the image gets really large because it's actual code uh, within the site. Um, but if you know you're not gonna make your illustrations really large, you can use a PNG as well. Um, and they'll look good because you're not stretching them out and they won't lose quality. All right, so this is the website here. This is the animated text widget, uh, the illustrations here at the bottom, the character, and we have the particles.js widget. So I'll go ahead and get started on recreating this website. So I'll go to File, New Site, and I'll click OK, and I'll double click on the home page. So the first thing I'll do is I'll make the browser fill black. So I'll go to the browser fill and set it to black. And I'll bring the character in. So we have her here. I'll click, hold, and drag, and just place her right in there. And it's just that easy. Just drop it in. Um, you can also paste from Illustrator. Uh, so if I were to go here, I could just copy this character and paste, and it would actually be the same thing. So um, you actually don't need to save it as an SVG. You can just copy and paste from Illustrator. All right, so the next thing I'll do is um, get the font that I used. So the font that I used for this website, here's the link. So I'll copy the link and I'll paste. So there we go, paste in there. And this is the font that I used. So I downloaded it and it downloads as a zip file. So here I have the zip file. It's called creepsville.zip. So I'll double click. And here what I want to do is right click, open with font book to install it on my Mac. I'll click on install font and it'll install, I'll click the check mark here and say install checked. And then I'm gonna use font plop. Um, if you haven't seen that video, it's a quick tip number 24, where I go over how to use font plop. Uh, it's a really useful uh, program for converting fonts to web fonts. Um, you can also use fontsquirrel.com and I have a few videos on uh, font squirrel as well. Font plop is only for Mac, so if you have a Windows computer, you can use font squirrel as well. All right, so here I'm just gonna drag this .ttf and it creates a folder with all the files I need to add it as a web font in Adobe Muse. So in Adobe Muse, I'll go to File, Add Remove Web Fonts, and here I'll click on Self-Hosted Fonts and I'll click on Add Fonts, and I'll drag and drop those three files. So I need a .eot file, a .svg, and a .woff. So it's three, these three files here, and I'll just click, hold, and drag, and place into Adobe Muse. So there I'll, I'll click, uh, by clicking continue, I affirm I have probably licensed the above fonts for website use. You'll just wanna make sure that's the case with your font as well. I'll click continue and click okay. So now I have access to that font. So what I'll do now is bring in the animated text widget. So I'll go to the library panel here to the right. And if you don't see the library panel, you can go to window 
and click on library. Okay, and here I'm gonna type in animated text and I'll bring in the animated text at first. So I'll click, hold and drag and place right up here to the left and then I'll bring in the animated text on load. So here I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse and now I'll work with the widget options. So for the text, I'm gonna say happy Halloween, just like that, the text color. Um, I actually have an orange that I'm gonna copy from uh, from here, so let me copy this hex code right in there and let me go back in here all right so the color I'm gonna say orange right now I'll just paste it in the hex code the font size I'm gonna say 3 3 M's 1 M is equal to 16 pixels and the tracking I'll say 3 and the alignment I'll say center and I'll say 2 for the line height or 1.5 to add a little bit more spacing there so it says happy Halloween and now I'll give it the uh, the font type uh, Creepsville so I'll go to the text option with the widget selected I'll type in Creepsville and here I have it as a web font it's here as a system font but you never want to use fonts as a system font always use a web font so here I'll select Creepsville and just like that so I think the font is a little bit bigger it's probably like five all right uh, let's do six all right and I'll just stretch this out a bit I can make it a, a bit wider, just like that. Okay, so happy Halloween. There we go, I want I want the uh, Halloween to be underneath uh, happy there. So happy Halloween, looks pretty good. Let's change the line height a bit uh, to 1.2. Okay, that looks good. And yeah, there we go. Okay, and I'll just bring this down here and bring this down here. So the next thing I want to do is make this character float. So I'll go to the library panel and I'll bring in the Muse Motion widget. So with the Muse Motion, the 1.3 version, we now have these presets. So it's, it's the Muse Motion widget uh, presets. And one of the presets is Muse Motion Bouncy Ball. So here I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse. And we see the graphic style name. Uh, for this motion or for this widget is motion one. So I'm going to apply this graphic style name to the character here So I'll click on the character I'll go to the graphic styles panel and if you don't see the graphic styles panel You can go to window and click on graphic styles So here I'll click on the element or on the character create a new graphic style double click and I'll call this motion one So this character is actually going to bounce now because I brought in the bouncy the bouncy ball preset so if I preview we're going to see that character bouncing. So it's just bouncing like that. Um, that's not exactly what I want her to do. So let me um, close that there. And let's work with these options a bit. So uh, for the motion, uh, I'm going to change the motion value to 50 pixels. So she's not going all the way down 160 pixels. Um, and then for the easing, I'm going to say ease in out. So it's a bit of a smoother easing um, as she's floating. And for the duration, I'm gonna say two. So it's a slower movement there as well. And that's basically it. So now she'll be hovering instead of bouncing. So we can see she's hovering and I can probably make her hover a bit faster. So I'll change it to one second. So here in the duration, I'll say one second and I'll preview. Yeah, that's not bad, maybe 1.5. So I'll say 1.5 here. Okay, and I'll preview again. Yeah, that's good. All right, perfect. So we see the Happy Halloween goes in and out. Um, I just wanted to to animate in. So here I'll click on the animated text, and here in the options I'll uncheck loop. So it just plays once and then stops. So there we go. Happy Halloween and we have her floating. So let me see here. Yeah, let me make Happy Halloween actually extend the, the length of the page. That actually looks a bit nicer and we don't have to bring this character all the way down. Yeah, that's better. Okay, all right, so I'll preview. And there we go, perfect, that looks better. 
All right, so let's add the bats in the background. So I'll just go to the library panel and here I'll type in particles.js and I'll bring in the particles.js widget full screen. So I'll click, hold and drag, place into Adobe Muse. And for the bats, um, again, I went into this file and we have this bat image here. Um, so I copied and pasted. So copy and paste, new, and I created a 100 by 100 artboard, pasted, and yeah, just resized the bat so it fit within the artboard, something like that, and then centered it. And then I saved it as a PNG image in Illustrator. So here I'll go into the particle.js. Um, I'll click on the particles option or section. And then for the particle shape, I'll say image. I'll say image here and then select an image for shape. I'll click add file. And then um, let's see, I have the image here. So I'll select the bat image and that's basically it. So if I preview now, um, I also want to send this to the back. So I'll right click arrange and send to back. So the bats are in the background. So if I preview, um, we have the lines and there's little bats, you can barely see them, um, but I don't want the lines and I want the bats to be larger. So I'll go into the particles.js widget for the line link option, I'll uncheck enable line link. The size, I'm gonna say 40 and I'm gonna uncheck enable random size. And for the minimum, minimum size, I'm gonna say 40 as well uh, because I don't want them to get really small there. Oops, I checked uh, here. Uh, I don't want a random size. So let's see how that looks. So we might have too many bats. All right, so that's a lot of bats. I don't want so many bats. So um, let's go into the particles.js widget. For the particles, I'm gonna say maybe 20 bats. That might be good. So the number of particles, I'll say 20. And I'll preview. And that's it. It's kind of cool that they're moving so fast in the first, uh, one I didn't have them move so fast and I just had them going up but I kind of like it that they're moving in all directions it looks pretty nice all right so the last thing I'll do is add the illustrations here at the bottom so I'll just go into my finder and I have uh, these illustrations here so I'll just click hold and drag place into Adobe Muse so one two three four five and I'll just place them here at the bottom and I'll select them all, use the align options, uh, distribute uh, vertical centers, and uh, just align it to the bottom so they're all at the bottom. And there we go. So there we go. I'm just using the align tool to align them to each other. Okay. And then I'll center that and I'll pin all of these uh, to the bottom of the page with the pinning options in Adobe Muse. So now if I preview, uh, that's it. So we have those characters or those illustrations here at the bottom. I'll probably give them more spacing. So let me do something like this and like this. And I'll select them all. Okay. Something like that. Or yeah, let me align to selection. Distribute uh, the, the horizontal centers and align to the bottom. Okay. And that should do it. All right. Perfect. Looks good. So I'll just bring in the font smoother and that'll be it. So I'll bring in the font smoother light and perfect. So there's the Happy Halloween website. Uh, Happy Halloween. We have bats, we have different illustrations. So again, uh, just to recap, uh, this character and these illustrations I got from adobestock.com. I just typed in like Halloween vector um, here. Halloween vector and it comes up with a few different characters and things like that that you can use uh, for your projects and yeah and so these illustrations um, this font I got from DeFont, or actually it was from acidfonts.com I'll leave a link in the description area below and if you if you are if you are on Windows uh, you can go to fontsquirrel.com and then you can go to generator right here and then you can upload the font, the the font, uh, the Creepsville font, and then um, then export it as a web font. So you'd click on export, and then you could click on SVG.WFF and EOT, and then you could um, you could convert that font into a web font and download it. Uh, font plop is just a bit quicker, but I do know it's just for Mac. 
Um, so if you're on Windows, you can use Font Squirrel. And I have a few video tutorials on that as well. Okay, so I'll preview one more time. And there we have it, the Happy Halloween website. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. Uh, to get access to the widgets used in this video tutorial, you can go to museforyoushop.com. And here you can click subscribe today. And here you can click subscribe now to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. Um, here we have the Muse Motion widget. We also have the animated text widget and the particles.js widget is right down here. Okay, and here you can click on the widget. You can click add to cart to purchase individually. Or again, you can click subscribe to get access to all widgets and any new widgets I come out with for $39 a year. So that's it for this video tutorial. Again, I do this to help you build awesome websites without code. If you like this video tutorial, you can subscribe below. Also in the show more section below are links to other resources and links to museforyoushop.com. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video tutorial. Thank you. Muse for you, awesome websites without code.